from one of the loudest venues in the NFL. There's a look at Arrowhead Stadium here in Kansas City. Today, we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But CD, this Chiefs club, you'd have to imagine, well positioned to make a run at repeating as Super Bowl champions. But it all starts and ends with number 15, and that, of course, the reigning league MVP, Patrick Mahomes. Here's the kicker, Harrison Butker, ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Arrowhead. Braxton Berrios selected to bring it out. And he returns this to the 22. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback, now in his fourth NFL season, Tua Tungavailoa. Injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season. He led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league, and even more importantly, took them to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert, and they'll get this to the 24, and it's second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver, but he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front, so if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. And that's going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, Brian? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it instead. He fired an absolute bullet. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. On first and ten, it's Mostert. Room here to run! And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Going to the air, Tugabailoa. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. Only able to gain a couple there, and it's second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. From the gun, it's Tua. That's going to be caught by Waddle. That'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. So Tua making the completion there. What's different about playing a left-handed quarterback like him? And specifically, I guess, what does this defense need to try and take away? I'll take the first part that you asked about being left-handed. We've got to find out if he can move to his right and still continue to be accurate. So I want to push him in that direction and see if he can get his body squared around and make those throws that he's used to making. The next part is he's a dart thrower. Loves those short to intermediate routes first. Sit on those and make him throw the deep ball. Not that he's not capable, but you want him to prove it to you first. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. 
They'll try it now with Mostert. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind the line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll step aside and get an update when we return to KC. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Now a seventh-round surprise from a year ago. It's Isaiah Pacheco, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, give him 14. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. On first down, Mahomes. Man open, that's Marquez Valdez-Scantler. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. On first and ten, here's Mahomes. That'll be cut. It's two. And in for the Chiefs touchdown. Kadarius Tony, 29 yards. And the Chiefs are on the board first here this afternoon. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route. Take that out. Make it illegal because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as a wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Extra point by Butker is on target. And that makes the score 7-0. the touchdown. Here's Butker on to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, OK, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. A good down to possibly take a shot. And in fact, they'll come up with an empty backfield on second and inches. Two are going to throw. Incomplete. That's just flat out a terrific play because it's rare that you see a hitch route batted down. That means someone read that one really well and was right on the spot when the ball got to the receiver. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. They'll try and run here with Moster. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Two and now on first down. Getting this out to the flat, Moster. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. A Miami first down on a 14-yard pickup. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense, 
and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. I love those corners who can not only cover, but don't mind getting a little physical as well. How about the coverage on that play, knocking that pass away? So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Off of play action. Tongue of Iloa. And the throw there going to be incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. Kadarius Toney deep for KC. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. They've got the 7-0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they'd really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. Now a throw here to his running back, and he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield, but as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up the first down. And he almost gets this to the 30, taking down about a yard shy. That goes for a Chiefs first down, 14 yards. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. He's got this to the rookie, Rasheed Rice. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll bring up second down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Well, prior to that, he had hit his first six passes to start the game, so on a nice little run to begin. It feels like this offense has carried its dress rehearsal into the game, you know, because you do practice it, you do go through it, and in this case, it is clicking exactly like they drew it up. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. A lot depending on the spot there, and he got it, but it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield foot 
to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. That's laid out deep for Rice. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. And Patrick Mahomes, for all of his artistry and arm angles and what he can do in the short passing game, never forget he's got a cannon as well. He unleashes a big one there, but that time it winds up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Mahomes to throw. That's complete. It's Travis Kelsey. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 23. A really nice gain of 25 yards. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. Throw left side, complete to Tony. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it'll be second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. From the 22 now, here's the second down and nine. They go play fake. Mahomes, short throw hauled in by Kelsey. Call it a gain of six on the play, and now it's third and three. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. They'll come up now third and three. And again, it's Mahomes. Down inside the 10. And the Chiefs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Mahomes now to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Down near the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Mahomes going to throw. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now Mahomes. Under pressure, they got him again. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, Mahomes off. Harrison Butker on for the Chiefs field goal. From the left hash, this from 46. Butker's kick here is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So another scoring drive there, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. 
And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Tua. He'll hit Mostert again here. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Second down and eight. Here's Tua. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Trying to get something positive to happen here before the break, and they sure need it. They went for the big one, but it winds up incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Tua setting up shop to throw again. And this is going to be dropped. Oh, my gracious. There was no one in his area code, but he could not hang on to it. Oh, I don't know if he's sensing contact to come or what, but that's a ball he'd love to have back. That could have gone for big yardage, but it just didn't want to stay in his hands. That's a tough break. On is Jake Bailey to send this one away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So a change of possession here on the punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. So we've come upon halftime here in KC with the Chiefs on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. In the first half, it was the reigning league MVP and Super Bowl MVP, Patrick Mahomes, who did his thing. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. Ten nothing is our score as we get started again on EA Sports. Hardman going to bring it out of the end zone, and they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. Here comes the Chiefs' offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three, and they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Mahomes throw here complete to Kelsey. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Now, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. 
That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They cannot afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. Here's the Chiefs punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. He'll send this one into the Midwestern air, and it's a good one. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Open man downfield is Waddle. He's got it. Loose inside the 30. Inside the 10. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Jalen Waddle, 85 yards. And the Dolphins have cut it back within a score. Partner, you know what the real key is to stopping a good passing attack? You tell me. Being able to tackle as soon as a guy catches a football. Didn't work out there. No, because when you give up the big run after catch, the rack yardage, that puts your defense in a big-time stressful position. A lot of rack yardage and a touchdown there on the big play. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. To the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Hardman going to bring it out of the end zone. And bulldozing his way through. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and 10. Throwing now is Mahomes. And that one caught by Rice. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A well-executed 22-yard game. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. Mahomes now on first down. Open on the left side. This is Valdez Scantlin. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And it'll be second in a couple. Looking to throw is Mahomes. That's caught left side by the tight end Gray. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25 yard line. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. They'll swing this out to Tony. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. So the completion good for seven there, and it brings up third and five now. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Travis Kelsey. 38 yards, and the Chiefs are able to extend their lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that.
Butker now to add the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it culminates in a Travis Kelsey touchdown. the touchdown. Here's Butker on to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Jalen Waddle, the speedster wide receiver, brings out this offense. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. How many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Running the counter with Mostert. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Here comes Tony on the return. That'll be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. Patrick Mahomes on his way out for their next drive. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. A third quarter action from Kansas City. Second down and 10. To throw, it's Mahomes. That went into the hands of Tony downfield. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That one covers 29 yards. First down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Mahomes now on first down. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Mahomes to throw on second down. Pitch and catch here to Travis Kelsey. And Kelsey's going to have a Chiefs first down as he'll be brought down just outside the red zone, marking at the 21. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. On first and now a loose football. The ball comes out, and this is picked up by the Dolphins. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. 
So potentially a turning point here in the third quarter as that swings the door back open just a bit. Yeah, they're still down two scores, but I do think we're at that point in the game where you're going to reach for the football whenever possible. You're going to hear the coaches scream from the sidelines, tackle him, second guy in, tackle the ball. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Open man is Waddle complete. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. This offense so far on third down, they've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and eight. Going to the air, Tugga by Loa. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, okay, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. So after the INT, here's Mahomes. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Here's Mahomes to throw. His throw here is incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now here's Mahomes. It's Kelsey on the ground. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Mahomes throwing on fourth. And it's going to be batted down. And will go the other way with the football. Andy Reid went for it, but it won't pan out. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. And I am not sure, partner, there what the mindset was to go for it. I don't know. And some teams just feel that possession is the key to everything. They just want to have the football in their hands. No matter how it goes to the other team, they just don't trust doing that. So they say, let's uh, go for it and try and finish it ourselves. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. To a hit, and the ball is out. Fortunate to get that football back, because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity, because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. Looking to pass to him. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. I like the thinking there because right after a sack, it can be a great time to call for a screen to your running back and use the eagerness of the defense against him. Able to gain some positive yards out of this one and make things a little bit easier for him on third down. So a tough situation to overcome here. Third and 17. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. 
That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Wait a second, that's got to be a mistake. They declined it. That doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, it doesn't at all because you want that penalty. All right, they just picked up a first down, right? He yeah, want the penalty. I, I, I am so confused right now. They run it with Pacheco from the gun. Down to about the 32. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Yeah, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm is confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Flushed out right. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly and neither did he. They got to him just in time and now that forced him to make a decision with this fourth down call. All right, all right. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. Tackle that time by Jerome Baker out of Ohio State. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll run again. And he's brought down. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll run here with Pacheco. And he is in. Touchdown, Kansas City. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And the Chiefs are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. So he had the nice run to get him down there. Was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in. And he carries it across the goal line. 
Extra point by Butker is on target. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. So now here come the Dolphins. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end... I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On first down, Tonga Vailoa. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. What we just saw there, that's really been a common theme all afternoon. A lot of pressure. That forced the errant pass. He's been under duress this entire afternoon. He just had to unload that when he's fortunate. It was just incomplete and not intercepted. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Tua sets up to pass it. I had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. But defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. A run by Pacheco on second down. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well, because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle at the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee, and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Phil Duffy picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Well, CD, for the losing side, they had opportunities in this one, but big plays just didn't go their way, especially late, and they have to suffer the L here. Certainly felt like that takeaway 